Welcome to Unscripted Unstoppable. I am your host, Michelle Farley. I am a 40-something-year-old creative. I am a wife. I am a mom. Um, and I am a writer. I'm a multi-hyphenate writer. And I created this podcast um, for listeners who are similar to me, who are still striving for their dreams, uh, even though they're 40 or plus, uh, they're still striving for their dreams and going forward. Um, I hope that you find some little nuggets of truth, inspiration that will keep you moving forward so that you cannot just be a dreamer, but a dream doer. All right. So let's get started. When I tell you that life be lifing, if I could just go back the last 15 minutes of just trying to record this podcast, I am so glad that I chose the title Unscripted Unstoppable because for real, life is unscripted. At least in my life is definitely unscripted. Uh, and and I'm for sure unstoppable because because I have no other choice. I have no other choice. <laughs> but anywho, welcome to the first episode of Unscripted and Unstoppable. I am your host, Michelle Farley. I am so grateful for this opportunity um, to um, have my first season of Unscripted and Unstoppable. Uh, even making the decision to do this podcast has um, definitely taken me out of my comfort zone. Um, and uh, made me realize that it is better to have a product done than for it to be perfect and never completed. Um, there's so many things that I had planned to do. Uh, one of those things uh, was to um, get my makeup done, uh, you know, uh, change up my hair. I wanted a better background. Uh, I wanted some better um, soundproofing equipment. And I just didn't have the time to get those things done. And instead of not allowing myself to do this or in instead of allowing myself to um, talk myself out of it because it wasn't perfect, I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to do it. So here I am. That was a very crazy intro, uh, but you can definitely understand that this is probably more than likely uh, be the cadence of this podcast. Uh, and so I think it's, um, I actually had a different topic for episode one, but now I'm feeling like, you know, the first episode should be, you know, life happens. Life definitely happens. Uh, I created this podcast um, specifically for women over 40 uh, who are creatives of, of some sort, whether they are a, um, an author, a writer, a singer, a painter, a sculptor, whatever it is, that that is their passion. That is what gives them joy and peace and happiness, along with all the other things that complement our lives. But this is that one particular thing that you can't quite let go of. Um, and maybe you had to, you know, sit it on the back burner to take care of your responsibilities. Um, and as time goes on, we, we, uh, or me, I should say, um, thinking that maybe I've lost, uh, I lost my opportunity. I lost my, my space in line and that there are others who are equally as talented and equally as passionate who are striving towards um, their goals that may have less responsibilities um, than I do. Uh, and I really had to reflect this year about why am I okay with talking myself out of my blessing talking myself out of my purpose, talking myself out of my passion um, and what I came up with because it's really scary to do something that you haven't been able to obtain yet and it just seems unre unreasonable and unrealistic that something that great, something that powerful, something that amazing would happen to me. Not to say that other great things haven't happened to me, but this thing that I know that I know that I know that I know I have a skill at and a talent for, why am I 
running away from it? Um, is it, you know, because I'm fearful that, you know, I will actually, you know, be able to obtain it? Or am I fearful of rejection of people not liking my work? Is it a combination of it all, right? Um, and so this uh, middle of the road for me really had me doing some soul searching. And in that, I felt like, oh, this will be a great way to express myself and get those feelings out, get those negative thoughts out, talk it through so that I can actually start making progress towards the things that I really do have a passion and a desire to do. And so um, that's why I created Unscripted Unstoppable. Uh, if you haven't um, caught on to the, the, the term or the, um, excuse me, uh, the reason why I uh, selected to call Unscripted Unstoppable is that I am a writer. Um, I'm a different, I'm a multi-hyphenate writer. So I am a staff writer for uh, my nine to five. I am a uh, freelance copywriter for my side business. Uh, I am a budding screenwriter. And um, I'm also a children's book author. So uh, there's a lot of hyphenates into my writing ability. And each of those pockets um, bring me joy, bring me happiness in their own way. Uh, and ultimately, I would like to write for a living on my own terms. And what that means, I'm still defining, but I definitely know what it isn't. And I know what's possible. And so that is what, you know, created this episode or not even this episode, but created this body of work um, that has come in the form of a podcast. And I'm so thankful that you are here. Um, I don't know if that'll be the intro because that was super long. I, I wrote out some notes that I have just went rogue on. So um, so I hope you're still staying around. Uh, but I, I do want to go to some of my notes because I, I pulled out some things that I wanted to um, draw on and that I wanted people to really you know, understand the why of this podcast. Um, so I launched this podcast because I wanted to share um, my my creative journey, um, where I've come from, where I'm going, uh, and what my vision is for the future. Creativity and writing has always been a lifelong companion of mine. And no matter how life has lifed, uh, it has always stuck beside me even when I put my notebooks under my bed, even when I shut the computer down, even when um, the ideas I had on note cards, I put them in a box and stored them away. It was still there tapping me on my so shoulder, like, where are you? I'm still here. We need to do this. And so from the times when I was a little Michelle, writing stories in my bedroom, to the grown woman, Michelle, who's in her 40s, still creating screenplays. All of that has been a part of me and my journey. Um, and we all know that, you know, life is funny. And it'd be throwing curveballs and darts and fireballs, uh, as I'm sure all of you can relate. And while we're ducking and dodging and moving, um, we can kind of let go of the dream of the dreamer and the doer that's in us. And so, you know, I want to get back to that. And so, you know, life be life in. So, you know, I don't know where to start and I won't go all the way back to like childhood. <laughs> Not yet, at least. But I would say like in my 20s in college, like I knew sitting in my political science class, um, thinking that I wanted to do pre-law and I remember sitting in this, in this class, political science class, and I was just like, yeah, this ain't it. This this ain't it for Michelle. Like, these people in here are real passionate about NATO and all these other terms. And I just, I couldn't get with it. Now, and I understood, like, there's different types of law, and this could be that one class that I just wasn't feeling. But I was just like, it's just not this is not for me. <laughs> like, I don't like it. Um, and I prior to being a political science major, I was a business major, which was so interesting because I am not that great at math. Like I'm okay 
but your girl shouldn't been in nobody's nobody's accounting class and so I went to my guidance counselor or my advisor in college and I was telling him like these are the things I enjoy these are the things I'm really good at and then he was just like well it sounds like uh, you're a writer. And at that time, I was also like a staff writer for, not like I was a staff writer uh, for our college paper. Uh, and eventually, and actually, uh, uh, I went from being a, um, a staff writer to a news editor to actually editor in chief. Um, and so that's where I was finding my, you know, I was like, this is, this is it. I love this. And so he was like, I think that you should think about changing your major to something that you really want to do. And at that time, I went to Cleveland State University in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, they did not have um, a film program. Uh, I was in a college that now has been closed, but it's called First College, and you could design your own major. And these, you know, this is like early, this is late, uh, those early 2000s, where it was still kind of taboo to go rogue, I guess, and create um, create your major, right? If it wasn't business administration, if it wasn't education, you know, or something like pre-law, pre-med or something like that, people looked at you crazy, you know, um, or, you know, joked about, oh, you just get a communications degree. You can be working at Macy's, you know, all types of craziness. Um, but I was like, I'm going to do it, you know? And I think as soon as I started doing it, I was flourishing, and it was everything. I mean, and the work was hard. I became a, um, so my uh, major was in creative writing with a focus on screenwriting and film production. And it was the best decision that I made. Um, and even like, you know, after I graduated, I worked on like large productions, um, but I still had like my nine to five, my, like I worked at an alternative high school. Even that, I would say every job, every career I've had since the time that I've graduated from undergrad and even graduate school, it has helped me with the positions that I have. Um, so I don't regret doing that at all. But I will say, though, in my 20s, I really thought I'm going to write like three scripts in college. And one of these is going to get bought and I'm about to be out here living my best life. And none of that happened. None of that happened. I did write some scripts. Uh, and, you know, after getting feedback, <laughs> because, you know, that's that that's another story for another time. But like um, being able to receive criticism, being able to receive notes to make something better. Um, that was hard for me because I wanted to, you know, I'm like, oh, I want it to be real and authentic. And I don't want anybody to change my words. But like now I totally get it. But in my 20s, I thought I totally had it figured out. Um, and uh, there were so many great things happening. Like, um, there is a, uh, casting director, Lillian Piles in Cleveland, Ohio. I was introduced to her by my, um, college advisor. Um, and she needed an, an assistant for one of the, a major production that was coming into Cleveland. And I was so nervous. And he was like, I think you will be a good fit for her. And she is so cool, but very like, firm okay she's ex she's expecting greatness from you okay uh and so you know I was really nervous I was like she's about to like let me go because I messed up uh, quite a few times in the beginning and then she we you know she sat down when we had a conversation with me and then from then on like you know I just you know had to get myself together and, and uh you know let work be at work and anything else that's happening catch back back up after work so it was long days, but it was just great to be um, in her office and also just being around other people who um, uh, who were in that field. Um, and so after that internship, because that was actually an internship, um, but after that, like she actually like hired me. So anytime there was a production. And so um, that was just a really great experience. And from that experience, I was able um, to... Um, don't do work on other productions. Um, that was like, I was just building up my resume. And I just remember right before I graduated from college, 
and had an opportunity to work on a production in California. It was actually in Santa Monica and it was going to be for six months. Um, and I was just like, okay, as long as I can get to California and work for six months and then just kind of figure out what my next job is going to be, like, this is it, right? Um, and then term come to find out, I had to have major surgery, um, couldn't leave. Uh, so, you know, like the next time it comes around, I got it. So I'm, you know, had the surgery, I'm doing okay. Um, and actually I'm doing this out of order. So the major surgery was a second, the second thing. When I finished school, I was still working on, um, a lot of production assistant jobs, uh, and they paid well. Um, and I was really trying to make the decision about what I was going to do for graduate school. Um, did I want to try to apply somewhere on the West coast and then I'll already be in California or did I want to try, you know, um, uh, Ohio university here cause they had a, a, a cinema uh, program and I wasn't quite sure. So I did work at the high school at the alternative high school until I could figure it out. And I'm so glad that I did because what ended up happening is that I actually had a, um, I had to have surgery. I ended up having um, a dermoid cyst had to be removed. Her ovary had to be removed. It was crazy. It was absolutely nonsense. But I'm glad that that did happen because I was able to um, have the surgery. Didn't have to pay. Like there was no bill. Like my insurance covered everything. Um, and then after that, I was just like, okay, yo, I got to figure out something because I don't, this ain't it. <laughs> and so I had the opportunity. I actually had to um, apply for a position with Nickelodeon. And I got to the second round of interviews and I flew out to Burbank. And if you can imagine what happened is that I bombed. I bombed. And when I look back on it now, it was nothing but complete sabotage that I did to myself because I was fearful. I was afraid of that. What if I'm not good enough? What if somebody else, you know, is better at this? And I bombed before, uh, before I could get on the plane to head back to Cleveland, they had already told me, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, and so, you know, 20s was an interesting time, right? 20s was an interesting time. Uh, and so I kind of got focused on, I was still writing, still creating, still doing some side production work. Um, but I kind of had given up on that idea of that. Even after I got my master's in screenwriting, I still thought like, nah, this is not going to happen for me. And um, by the end of my 20s, you know, I kind of settled into uh, just regular life. You know, I was making good money. Uh, you know, I had a career. I was making good money. Um, at that time I met my now husband, um, and that, you know, chain of events, <laughs> that's another time for another story or another story for another time. Um, so by the time I hit 30, you know, reality, I said, and I was a full on adult, you know, I was a wife, a mom, owned a house. Um, I was responsible for my mother who at that time was sick. Um, and so, yes, I still had passions and dreams. Um, but you know, they had to take a backseat to the demands of life, right? Still trying to be a responsible adult. And so all that to say, here we are, I am 42 years old. I'm going to say 42 and a half, but we're not going to rush the tempo. I'm 42 years old. And uh, that's why I'm here today, right? To remind myself and to remind you that it is never too late to reignite that creative fire within. Our 40s are a perfect time to reconnect with our passions. I'm living proof of that. You're living proof of that. Uh, the KFC man is proof of that. Uh, Ava DuVernay is proof of that. Um, uh, uh, who else? Toni Morrison is proof of that. There are so many people in history that we revere as amazing Cicely Tyson um, that really didn't get their start to in their mid 30s or early 40s right I don't even eat a KFC but even the Colonel Sanders was in his 60s right and so if there's still breath there is still time um, and I think that this is a perfect time to reconnect with our passions um we can be unscripted and be unstoppable. We can embrace our creative destinies without fear of judgment or limitations. I truly, truly believe that. And so I guess I'm trying to transition here because this podcast is all over the place here. 
Um, but so how do we begin this journey, right? I think that, it, or how do we get to this journey, this place of like, okay, I'm 40 plus, this is what I want to do. What's the first step of me getting to this creative place that I want to be in, whatever that thing is, right? So for me, in this journey, I've been creating, I have been fortunate enough to have um, my short script uh, be accepted into um, film festival and other competitions. Um, but what is my goal right now? My goal right now is to complete more short scripts, um, finalize uh, a, a feature length film that I'm working on. Um, and so there's two goals that I'm, I'm going to be ver verbal about them, say it out loud into the atmosphere. There's two things that I want to see happen. And I don't know if it's going to happen in 2023 or if it's going to manifest itself and come to fruition in 2024. But there's two things that I want to do. One, I want someone to either uh, read my feature length and want to purchase it or uh, someone who reads my script and wants to represent me so that I can create more films or excuse me, more scripts, more screenplays for um, production um, production houses. Uh, right now, uh, as the day of this recording, it is September 6th and it has been 100 plus days for the um, writer strike. And so, you know, if this were to happen like next week, hopefully it will meet with a production company that is not currently um, being banned by the strike. OK, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so that is that is my journey. Right. So for me, um, it's starting with like starting with like, what do I want? Acknowledge a person. I'm going to take it back. So one, I want to acknowledge that our creativity is an essential part of who we are. Say it in your car or wherever you listen to acknowledge that your creativity is an essential part of who you are. So again, whether you're a writer, a painter, a musician, simply for someone looking for a fresh perspective on where you want to go with your life and your career, your creative spark is your unique power. Um, and whatever your creative spark is within, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but whatever that is in the, in the, in the realm of what you want to do. Okay. So like, if you want to be a car sales, you want to, you want to be the, the, um, you want to be the version, you want to be like the affordable version of a rental car place, right? Like that's your job, your business. You want to like have like six or seven car lots where regular working people can, um, get a car so they can get back and forth to work while the other ones in the shop, right? You want to be that go-to person, right? You have that unique thought, idea, creative spark inside of you that is so unique and so powerful that you can not only accomplish that, but you are deserving of that. And that is the way I feel about writing, that I can do this. I know I am acknowledging that my creativity is an essential part of who I am. It is an essential part of who I am. And because it is a part, an essential part of who I am, that I must love it. I must treasure it. I must listen to it. I must feed it. I must nurture it. I must respect. I mean, I already said respect, but I'm going to say it again and respect it. No matter what, good or bad or indifferent, that has to be consistent. It has to be constant. It without, without um, modification. It just simply has to be. All right. So um, yeah, I went all over the place with that. Uh, so okay. So how do we begin? this journey, right? So we talked about acknowledging the creativity part. That's essential part of who we are. Um, and the next thing is really to define what we want, right? I told you what I want, right? I want representation and I want somebody to option this script. That's what I want. Um, and all of this, so life is life in, right? So how do you do that when life is life in, right? I think for me, and it's not about 
um, okay. For me, it's not about that um, we don't feel things when life happens. Excuse me. It's not about we don't feel things when life happens, but it is about how do we maneuver that, right? How can I show up for myself, acknowledge what is happening currently in that current space, but still give myself permission to act in real time towards something that I really desire to have. And, you know, so, um, okay. So like, for example, um, our dishwasher broke just for a better term. It broke, right? Um, that was an unexpected cost for us, right? Um, and even though it was an unexpected cost, I uh, had plans uh, with that money to do something for me um, in a more professional development way uh, or a professional development um, uh, opportunity for me in, in my writing. Right. So I'm like, I acknowledge that this is happening. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> I need to get or we need to get my husband and I creative about how we can still uh, I mean, full disclosure the it, it wasn't like we couldn't afford to pay for the for the dishwasher okay so it's full disclosure so i'm just using this as an example because i don't want people like oh they couldn't afford it it's that's not the issue the issue was that it was an unexpected cost and because they, we had things already set aside you know what i'm gonna take this out uh whatever this is i'm gonna take it out because i don't want to use it all right so um uh, okay, so once we okay, so I'm gonna start over. Okay, so now once we've acknowledged that, I think the biggest thing um, to start on this creative journey is to to recognize self doubt and then break free from it. Um. Uh, and it sounds again, it sounds way easier uh, than than what it really is, but it is it is doable and it is. Um, possible okay um creative blocks are natural um and they happen to the best of us so self-doubt is a really okay so we're going to kind of transition into uh okay so once we've identified that creativity we acknowledge that creativity is a part of us it is our passion whatever that passion is right but that drives us right and we have the right uh now we have the right but we um it's a blessing, all right? And so we don't want to, um, oh, I feel like I'm over the place right now. I'm like, okay, hold on. Okay, so now that we've made this acknowledging that our creativity is a central part of who we are, okay? Okay, so now that we've acknowledged that uh, creativity is an essential part of who we are, then it's time to get, acknowledge this self-doubt and then how can we get rid of this, okay? Get rid of this self-doubt. And how can we break free from self-doubt, right? So, because life, again, life be life in. Um, and so we recognize that even though life be lifing, uh, we allow ourselves to talk ourselves out of our blessing. And self-doubt can be a massive roadblock for many of us. And, um you know, for me, I still deal with it, but I feel like it's not as as um, severe as it used to be. The one thing that's helped me tremendously was embracing the idea that creativity, right? Creativity is about the process, not just the end result. Life is about the process and not just the end result. And as I started to compare the two, um, I started to view each piece of my life, um, the part that I can control, the part that I can't control, the part that I can create. All of that is a learning experience. And rather than um, something has to be perfect, I recognize that it is the process for me because in the process is where I gain my confidence. And that's such a vulnerable perspective um, for me. Uh, and um, because I really struggled with self-doubt. Um, and I I think it took me a while to recognize that that was actually the term that I was looking for. It was self-doubt. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was definitely self-doubt. Um, I used to put immense pressure on myself 
in everything that I did, right? And so it wasn't just, you know, the creative stuff. It was just like the regular stuff, right? Um, and so even in the regular stuff of like what I wanted to accomplish, whether that was at work or whether that was at home or whatever, I realized that I had to start setting achievable goals, right? And then allowing myself to celebrate myself for the progress along the way. So even now, as I really hone in and la- like have a laser beam focus of, you know, creating more scripts um, for television, television films, um, and even like theatrical films, right? I celebrate my progress. Like I celebrate writing 10 strong, amazing pages, right? Um, along the way. Um, and I start begin to surround myself with a supportive community of 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 people who um who think like me right and so um it's not to say that our families don't support us or our friends don't support us but sometimes you have to be around people who are in the same um the same thing that you're in right because because you need that community and you need people to understand i will tell you that my husband and i had several arguments several arguments because he would read something and not understand it right and it would bother me because of course it's my spouse I want you know I want you know I want kudos from him and he was just like oh yeah so I don't really get that yeah that's that's kind of I don't know right but then you know, and, and so because I dealt with self-doubt and because he, for him, he was thinking that he was being objective and just, you know, stating his opinion. I mean, I was sensitive about it. Right. But then when I had people read that same script who were part of my community, they were like, Michelle, this is awesome. Like, no, this is like I can see it vividly. The dialogue. This is amazing. Da, 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 right. So much so that one one of um, my filmmaker friends, we did a micro short uh, that actually placed, I think, second or third place. And we won a couple, you know, we won a nice little piece of change from that, you know. Um, and so it it that moment pissed me off, but I felt like it had to happen in order for me to um, be able to recognize like, you know what, your husband is going to support you, but this ain't for him. Right. And so you can't make someone understand something that they, they don't have, I won't say doesn't have the knowledge, but like he doesn't, he, he's not in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he can only give me so much, right? I can't expect him to give me something uh, or to see something that he's not equipped to see because that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not his thing. And so, and it's the same for him and his his uh, line of work because many a times he's expressing to me uh, what he's working on and I'm like, I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds like you're helping people. So yay. Okay. Very good. Um, so um yeah, so tangent again, but yeah, so surround yourself with a supportive community of fellow creatives who understand what you're going through, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. Um, in this process of you know creating, um, there can be a lot of like just you know of self doubt talk, and so just realize that I'm in the pro- I'm in I'm enjoying the process, and in this process, I am creating. Um, something great. I am learning things about myself. I deserve a space here. Uh, There is nothing that I cannot accomplish. There is space and room on this earth for me and my gifts. And I am walking in the space that God has designed for me. Like all those things, right? That's the self-talk that helped me, you know what I'm saying? Even acknowledging the self-doubt, like me, like God, you know what? Today I feel real crappy and I feel like I am not being very productive. and that's what I'm dealing with right now. And I'm trying to get rid of those feelings so that I can show and be the best um, person today, um, a best as a best creative, as a best parent, as the best spouse, as a friend, whatever it is, right? Acknowledging that and then moving forward. And so that kind of leads me into like, how do, like, how do you, like once you're in the process, how do you stay inspired, right? Um, and, you know, um, how do you say inspired, right? Because inspiration is, ah, I don't know. I want to say fleeting, but inspiration is like, um, 
it comes in many forms. Um, oh my goodness, I don't know. Like, um, I feel like it's all about being present, open to the world around us, right? Um, and how do you find inspiration in that? And I mean, you know, there's like, you can like journal and do all this other stuff too and write a poem and all this stuff too. But I think like deeper than that is, I think more than that is desiring more of that. Like if you don't know how to desire something more, right? You'll continue to think you're making progress and you don't. I think for me, it's um, more than, uh, you know, finding a community. That's, you know, that's the great part too, right? But then for me, it's like, okay, I need breakthrough. I need a nurturing environment. I need space. I need, um, I need to acknowledge that life is kicking my ass right now. And even through all of these things, this is what I'm truly working for and working toward. And I think that when we tend to, um, you know, internalize our failures more than our successes. And I think sometimes that we not only internalize our, our failures, I mean, we definitely project our failures more than our successes. Um, but it's also this whole notion, I'm going somewhere, y'all, I don't know where, but it's this whole notion of humility. And I think sometimes that we think by not um, saying things that we're proud of, that that's actually showing humility. And I think that part of the times where I don't feel creative is when I don't give a praise report or I don't share um, how God's love for me and my ability to create has allowed me a platform, has allowed me some type of success, some type of gold star. And when I don't say anything, I think it's disrespectful. Like, it's almost like, um, like you know, in the color purple and shook was like, I think it pisses guys off when we walk past, a, um, a, um, I'm saying it all wrong now, but we walk past um, uh the field, a field of color purple or something and, and don't acknowledge it, right? Like it pisses God off, right? This is so amazing and so beautiful. So why would we not recognize it? We recognize people for doing the craziest things. But when it comes to us and the things that bring us joy, the things that we care about and the things that we have worked hard for, that's like we don't want to share because it's being boastful and it's not. I remember the, the, the things that I used to get really, really excited about at church were other people's testimonies every single time because I felt like one I'm in a place where people are getting blessed but two like I'm I'm genuinely happy for you because I've seen what you've gone through I've heard your testimonies I've heard your cries we've sat and prayed together and to see you do a complete 180 and to see your life change for the better it was it was it was sobering it was exciting and it was like I know if it happened for them, it could happen for me, right? That's the thing. And I think when other people can't genuinely like be happy for you um, or not even saying you got to do backflips and cartwheels and do a whole parade, but if someone else's happiness makes you that upset, that uncomfortable, then there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger issue than someone having a testimony or someone getting a new car or someone getting a new position or 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 someone being signed to a talent agency or someone's script being bought. It's so much more that's happening uh, in you internally that has absolutely nothing to do with the thing that you think that you're upset about, right? Because for me, um, for me, the the thing is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want I want to see everyone winning. And whatever that is, right? If you win it in your family, bet my son, uh, uh, it's first grade, he's loving it. Um, uh, you know, because last year we had some issues with just like just crying m more than I would like him to. You know, this year handling things that upset him or that he do has a concern about, but just verbally saying like, you know what, I don't like that. You know, those type of things. See, we're all winning. You know what I'm saying? My, my son is is winning in that, right? I love to see it. My husband uh, is flourishing in his career. And so for me, even 
being able to go to Essence and uh, being able to uh, move ahead in some competitions that I've written for, like all of that, you know what I'm saying? Like my community is excited for me because people have seen me when I wasn't, when I wasn't doing what I wanted to do, when I wasn't doing what God had told me to do, when I wasn't flourishing in the fullness of who I am as a creative, as Michelle Elaine. That's like, that's what gives.